Okay, one more. Um, I misspoke. It says there's one more. Um, you know, the test or one more technique that we can use to find errors in data. And that is to see whether there are any unusual values. Okay. Usually, um, numeric columns, okay, this is for numeric columns, most data will fall within plus or, three, plus or minus three standard deviation, usually, okay, maybe four or five. But if it is on the negative side or on the positive side. But if you have something that's really way out there, okay, then maybe there is a typo there. Maybe there is a decimal point that was shifted to the left or to the right by mistake okay, or, or something like that. But it could be a legitimate value. You know? Maybe there is one, okay, there are only very few billionaires, right? So there may be one very extreme case. Uh, sometimes. It may be legitimate value, but at least we will know, we can filter out and see what those extreme values are and, and check it out and see whether it is legitimate or it is a mistake, right? So that is what we are trying to do here in detecting and filtering um, outliers. So what we're going to do here is, so here this is DF3 and we have five uh, columns V4 and V5 are object, okay? So when you have uh, object that is string, then you can do a unique or value counts to see how many of each of them are there. So that way, you'll know whether there are any unusual values or not. But for numeric, we have to do, uh, so checking for outliers, we compute um, z-scores. So z-score is what? Z-score is you take each value, subtract the mean from it, okay? and then divide by standard deviation. That will give you how many standard deviation a particular value is away from the mean. Okay? If it is larger than the mean, then you'll get a positive z-score. If, if the value is smaller than the mean, you'll get a negative z-score. Okay? So, so we can, the, here we are computing, you know, there are easier ways than doing this. Okay, more quickly you can, you can do, but here we are going to do this step by step first. So we compute the mean, we compute the standard deviation, and then we apply, apply that uh, here, okay? So, here, for, this is for V1, right? So V1, the mean and standard deviation. Okay. Now, how many, are there any values that are less than three standard deviations from the mean? Okay. So get that. What about more than three standard deviations? So that there are nothing that's more than three standard deviation. But actually, we don't, want, we don't want to be doing this. We want to do this in one go. Um, so we can, we can set up a mask. Okay. So DF3V1 is less than that on the positive side or greater than this on the negative side. And you use an ampersand for multiple conditions. So there are two conditions. One is either on the positive side, it's, it's uh, well, well, here, these are good ones. So these are within. So these are less than three standard deviations on the positive side and greater than three standard deviations from the negative side. So these are the good ones. Okay. So the opposite would be the uh, ones that are not good. So we change this to, how would you change for the opposite? So it will be greater than or equal to, or just greater than, three standard deviations on the positive side. And then you have to use the or, okay, 
and then the less than on this side. So there is one observation where that is true, which is outside the three standard deviation uh, range. Okay. And, then, and then you have a decision to make okay, you know, and examine if it is a legitimate value, then you just don't do anything, you keep it. If it is a mistake, then you correct the mistake. And sometimes if it is so large that it is, you could end up with a really, really, you know, uh, unusual value which may not have, which may, which may cause a lot of bias in your estimation. So you may deliberately, even though it is a legitimate value, you may deliberately throw it away because it, it is obscuring your model. Okay. So that's a decision that you'll have to make afterwards. So right now we are only interested in finding out whether there are any such unusual values and then identify those unusual values. Okay, so next question, your turn. So we're going to take, are there any outliers in, the, so we're going to look at one uh, variable at a time. So we are looking at protein. Um, are there any outliers? Well, actually, okay. So we can do this for all of them instead of just protein. So let's say that we have, so we have one, two, three, four numeric values. We already uh, generated this list with select D types, numeric. So these are the numeric columns. And this is what we are trying to, you know, total protein is what we are trying to uh, analyze. But let's just do for all of them, right? So, uh, so we have, say, M8 for mean. Or we can even say mean 8. Mean Q8. Okay, let's, how about that? Mean Q8. Okay. So mean Q8 is DFQ6, okay, so we are using DFQ6 of N cores, right? And then we do a mean. Okay, so mean Q8, Okay, so we have the four means. Okay. Everybody, you have the mean done? Okay. So then we need the standard deviation, so let's call that STDQ8. And then DF6, uh, I'm sorry, DFQ6, again, N calls. So this is only for the numeric calls. And then we do STD. Okay. Now, so we are, this is the PANDAS data frame. So for on a, when you apply STD function on a PANDAS data frame, the PANDAS STD function will be used. In Pandas STD function, DD of equal to 1 is the default. Remember, population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. In Pandas, sample standard deviation is the default. So you don't have to do anything uh, for DDF. So now we have the three DDF. And let's compute the lower and the upper limit. Uh, lower limit Q8 is what mean uh, Q8 lower limit is minus three times um, 
STDQA, right? So mean minus 3 and then you say upper upper limit is plus. Okay. Now, if you want to look at, well, I have a typo there. Let's say that we want lower limit Q8 comma upper limit Q8. So that will generate a tuple because when you have a comma of two things, then it will create a tuple of that and it will print that tuple. Okay. So, so here the first one is the lower limit, right? And then the second set is the upper limit of these four um, numeric columns. Okay? So, do you have the upper and lower limit set done, everybody? Good. Okay. Now, we have to just apply these limits to see how many there are. So we start with TFQ6, right, n calls. Now we want to look at this for n calls, right? So now is it low, lower, uh, less than the lower limit? Okay. okay so let's, uh, let's put that in parenthesis, okay, it's not actually needed, or if it is, is it either, you know, is it less than the lower limit, or is it greater than the upper limit, either case, it's, you have an outlier, okay, so or, okay, DFQ6, N calls, okay, again, uh, let's put that Greater than upper limit Q. Okay. So he's going to now, so this is just a condition, right? Or, or a mask. It's going to tell you whether it is true or not. So for each column, it's going to apply the lower and the upper limit. And it's going to convert the number into true or false. Condition is true or condition is false. If it is true, it is an outlier. If it's false, then it's okay. It's, it's good, right? But we, we are really not, you know, this, this table of true and false is not very helpful to us. You know, you're not going to be able to examine all this. All we are interested in is how many there are, how many true there are, right? So we have to enclose this within another set of parentheses, and then we can sum. So then you'll get a sum for each column. That will tell us okay. Okay, so that, that tells us how many outliers there are. And the question is about total protein. So total protein has no outliers. But there are outliers here in the first two, and we can, we can then just look at those two and then see what those numbers are and then examine it further and see, you know, uh, whether they are good numbers or, or not. And, of course,